the truth is out there somewhere. Welcome, everyone. It's probably not here, though, just for the, for the record. This is all lies. Nothing but lies. This is Season 1, Episode 17 of The X-Files. I am Peter. We talk about the episode, give my thoughts, my feelings, recap what I can, and get into the bottom of it all. This episode's called EBE, and it's a big deal of an episode. It's a big deal for everything to do with Deep Throat as a character, and possible elements of his backstory that are intriguing if they're to be believed which is kind of a big theme of this episode is how much we can believe anything he ever is actually telling Mulder so that's something we'll get into it's also notable because the lone gunman makes a, a debut of sorts and I'm pausing as I say that because I've heard of the lone gunman I've heard of X-Files fans talking about the lone gunman but until they show up in this episode, I thought the Lone Gunman was a character. <laughs> I did not think it was a, 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 a publication? Is that the right way of putting it? A, a group that are investigating conspiracies and whatnot. Uh, and I believe there is a spinoff of some kind. You know, maybe, maybe I'll look at <laughs> I've also been told to look at Millennium when that sort of starts to filter into the the the, the timeline but I'll, these are things to think about later so that was intriguing though it was intriguing to actually finally have some context of what the lone gunman is and get to meeting some of those characters i, I don't know if it's always going to be those characters if it's just the concept of this place and the the characters themselves might swap in or out or whatever but hey that's introduced here. The big thing with this episode is that Mulder and Scully become very paranoid and aware that they're being bugged and recorded and being fed false information in relation to a UFO sighting, I guess is the quick way of describing it, but it actually starts off a lot more complicated than that, where there's actually a UFO sighting of some kind in Iraq, and we see some stuff that doesn't quite make that much sense at the start of the episode. We get uh, we get a better context for it potentially later on. Again, from Deep Throat's information, so we c Mulder seems to still think this part's true, even once other things are proven to be a lie. But ultimately, this UFO gets shot down, and this truck and this trucker who has this UFO experience and ends up in a police station. Mulder and Scully come to investigate the scene and ask him a bunch of questions, and then all of a sudden someone comes in and says he's not answering any more questions, and this is all over. Go home. Very quickly, the, we sort of start going down the path of uh, the conspiracies. They go to see the lone gunman, and they talk about the listening devices and being bugged, and you know, I think one of the guys casually says he had breakfast with the, the guy who shot, actually shot JFK. That's like one of the first things one of these characters says. So they come off as ultra paranoid, and it, it almost has a bit of a joke payoff where Scully finds a bug and a pen as she's accusing them of being paranoid. So there's, just a, there's a little punctuation of humor to it, which I, which I appreciate. It made it kind of cute. I think the big theme of this episode, like I said, is deep thought and whether or not you can be trusted. And I think it's notable that for the first time, Scully is aware of his existence. She doesn't, you know, even know the name Deep Throat. She doesn't ha she, she sort of gets a glimpse of him at the very end of the episode in silhouette walking away into the mist. But she never sees his face or anything like that. But as soon as Mulder presents her with, like, information that he get, he got from Deep Throat, Deep Throat gave him this report of this, this incident in Iraq, and Mulder's put together that this truck is probably transporting a ship or part of a ship or something extraterrestrial, and the reason why there's all these UFO sightings happening across the country is they're basically following the truck, and they're maybe wanting something back from the truck. So this is kind of the broad idea that we get from everything that goes on. But that's where Scully finds out about Deep Throat. And immediately, she ponders, how do you know that you can trust him? Scully makes it clear that the only person she really trusts right now is Mulder. She does, you know, she, and I think at this point in the show, you know, we're 17 episodes in, we've earned that they do trust each other, we've earned that she believes that Mulder is genuine and earnest on all the crazy things he says. Like, whether or not she believes any of it to be true, that 
very much here comes to this idea of him being too willing to believe and her being too reluctant to believe, and that comes up as well in this episode. Because we see Deep Throat multiple times. Uh, Deep Throat shows up again and gives Mulder a photograph of UFOs waiting around for this truck somewhere in the country. And Mulder immediately is like, oh, come on, Scully, we have to go get this truck with these UFOs. It's the best photograph of a UFO I've ever seen. Scully, I'm about to cream my pants. This is such good shit. And Scully, after a couple of seconds of examining the photograph, breaks it to him that it's a fake. And explains why she thinks it's a fake. There's key pieces of evidence, inconsistencies in the image, and Mulder tries to explain them all. Mulder accuses her, her of being reluctant to believe, which is true. But that's and I think what I like about this this conflict here in this moment in the episode is that this is really informed by where their characters have been all season. Because Mulder absolutely is too quick to believe every time. He is jumping in the deep end, the first whiff of something UFO or paranormal, and he is all on board the crazy train. He thinks that we're already there. Start of this episode, yeah, he does a cool little trick with two stopwatches to prove that time's acting kind of funky where the UFO was. It's like, okay, that's actual evidence, right? But he's talking about it, okay, this was definitely a UFO site, and this was definitely this, it was definitely that. He's like that every episode, right? Pretty much, right? There's a, a few key exceptions, and it actually really sticks out when it's not, he's not that keen, and it gives the, you know, I think it was just last episode or the, uh, the, the, was it the last episode? Yeah, it was the last episode. The, the 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 guy that killed the other agent that he felt responsible for. The way that he didn't just jump down into paranormal explanations sold how much of uh, that memory and the, the, the pain of that was to him. Like, I bought that this was a big deal to him because he was actually acting a little out of character in a way that made sense, in a way that justified what was going on and felt informed by the story they were telling. But typically, he just jumps in, and Scully, who's been getting shit from him pretty much all season about not being willing to believe, and then he sort of plays that card again here, and then she, of course, has seen some things, but she's like, look, you're too quick to believe. You always believe. You want to believe anything and everything because you're so determined. And it felt quite genuine and sweet when she said, you know what, you're so passionate about the thing you believe in that it's that it's something she can admire it's something she can respect and stick up for and for even when she doesn't agree with what he believes in but he is too quick to just trust the thing that he wants to be real obviously this has all been set up in their character stories scully's had a lot of incidents recently about you know that question of her wanting to believe or being scared to believe came up in the episode with her dad and then of course all the deep throat stuff We've been getting him all season, but the main thing that sets up this mistrust, because the audience already feel this mistrust. We got that scene at the end of whatever episode it was a few ago, where it sounds like, no, he's working against Mulder, and he's just keeping him close to kind of control him. But the op- obviously, is he just telling that to the other shady people up top? Is he actually wanting to help Mulder, and is just playing it that way to justify what he's doing to the other shady people around him that he's now working against secretly? Is he really rooting for Mulder, or is he just trying to control them? That's a question that's kind of been in our heads, the audience, since that episode. So now we're actually getting that brought out in the episode with Scully and Mulder, and Scully raising these very valid concerns. And it sounds like Mulder walks out angry, and he's going to ignore what she's just said. So it's actually kind of a nice little reveal when it turns out, no, he went back to the, the agency, he's back at the bureau, he got the photo checked by an expert, and sure enough, it's definitely fake. Which leads to, okay, why is even he misleading them? And of course, Mulder asks about the bugs, and if, you know, he was looking in his apartment for more bugs, he was getting kind of restless about it. So we actually get another meeting with Deep Throat at, at the aquarium. I only remember it was the aquarium, because at the end, Deep Throat says something like, if that shark stops swimming, it'll die. Don't stop swimming, Mulder. But this is a very interesting conversation, and it's not the most interesting conversation they have in the episode, because the one at the end happens, and that's even bigger. But this is where he admits, yeah, like, there's some things that Mulder isn't ready to know, and that the public aren't ready to know, and he's still concealing some things, and the photograph is to throw, was to throw him off. 
the, the first report about the, the, the ship in Iraq was true, because if you hide the lie in some truths, you know, it, it'll sell better. And it's why, partly why Mulder was so re rearing to go and to believe this, this photograph. And Mulder was rightfully quite pissed about it. And the big thing about this conversation is that Deep Throat seemingly tells the truth at the end of the scene because he says that I'm not responsible for the, the surveillance. I'm not responsible for you being spied on with bugs. But I do know that they're still hearing you. Like, you've not gotten rid of all the bugs. So Mulder goes hunting for more afterwards and finds one in the, the uh, electrical outlet, quietly tells Scully, shows Scully the bugs there, and writes down a note saying, we have to find that truck, we have to get to the bottom of this. And we get a whole sequence where Scully and Mulder split up to lose their tails. Mulder does some driving, uh, well, dangerous driving, basically, to get rid of his tail. Scully gets in a cab and ditches her tail and gets like a, a real plane ticket and a fake plane ticket. <laughs> and like, I mean, I say a fake plane ticket, I just mean a decoy plane ticket. It's not a real ticket. Uh, at least that's what I thought she was doing anyway. But the whole idea being to throw everyone off, but they both end up in the right place, only to discover, oh, the truck's going in this direction. We have to get on another plane to go up somewhere northwest to try and intercept this truck before it gets to its destination. And we get them waiting in the car. We get, you know, all this traveling, all this stuff. And eventually, they're following the truck, and this bright light hits them, and then the truck's just sitting there stopped. And they go and investigate, and they open the back of the truck, they go in, they go behind the boxes, and sure enough, there's like a, it's like a hospital bed, effectively, and some machinery and some various scientific instruments. And it dawns on Mulder that this is... This wasn't a piece of a ship that they were transporting. This was a extraterrestrial life form, or uh, the EBE, which is the ex extraterrestrial being. I can't remember what the last E was for. Oh well, <laughs> doesn't matter. It was an alien. <laughs> it's an alien. <laughs> it doesn't matter. EBE is an alien. Anyway, uh, so he, like it's okay. So he's like okay. Oh, so so the, he thinks they just witnessed that flash of light was a UFO rescuing their their alien, right? And getting their alien back. And and honestly, this sounded quite plausible, and it was an exciting potential thing that he was talking about. This felt like a fun reveal that, oh, there was a life form in here, and some alien UFO came and took him back. And that's cool. That's interesting. That feels like a big deal for the X-Files, and I was ready to say a case closed. But then it all comes back around, and he does the stopwatch trick again. He does that test and discovers that there's no difference. Everything's normal. So he deduces quite quickly that this is once again a decoy. This is just to throw Mulder and Scully off of whatever's happening. They're going to great lengths to make sure they don't get to whatever this truth is. But of course, they track where all these... Mulder calls it like his UFO hotlines and stuff like that, and finds out where all of these UFO sightings have been happening because there was some truth in look where the ufos were and showing where the truck was going before so they figure out the truck's on its way to this town based on where the ufo sightings are and they see a like a party of people celebrating the fact that they keep seeing ufos and it's near this top secret building and the lone gunman apparently can hack and get access codes so they can fake their way into the building that's very skilled for these nerds who are into ufos but if we're going to see them again, maybe we'll get a further expansion of what their skills are. Uh, I, I am intrigued uh, that this lone gunman is going to become a thing that's not even just in this show. I wouldn't say that it, it, like I saw tons of potential in it of itself yet, but uh, it, it was an interesting group of characters, uh, at the very least, because they are so paranoid. Uh, Mulder tells him to stop recording the phone call. In fact, it tells him like three times and the guy still doesn't do it. So it just kind of paints a picture of who they are uh, but anyway they get into the building and they can't go into the top secret area their clearance doesn't have it for that and the guard tries to talk to them and Mulder realizing the jig is up just runs into the level six security area just bolts down the stairs tons of guards grab guns and chase them down there's actually a really funny moment here where Mulder jumps over like a little uh do not enter kind of sign that's on a chain or whatever it is and he like trips on it and like face plants and i have no idea if that was like completely intentional 
or if it was just like a oh that happened when they were shooting the scene and it looked kind of good because he stayed in character so we'll just keep it in uh but it worked in context it showed you how desperate he was and we get this great moment where he's running he gets into a room with a lot of like industrial looking scientific equipment it's very colorful actually for what it is but otherwise you know it had a vibe to it and he's running towards this chamber that's in the middle of this big room and there's like a window you can see on the side and it's like a red light inside and he's running to it because he thinks this alien or whatever it is is in there and he's bolting to it but the guards catch up with them hold him at gunpoint before he can get to actually see inside so it's this really tantalizing tease of like seeing and in him actually seeing with his own eyes an alien being in front of him a confirmation that Mulder's wanted since he was a child after the whole thing with his sister to know that he's not crazy and whatever else but after a few seconds you just hear a voice say let him go and out walks deep throat and he just saunters in sends the guards away gives Mulder his gun back and says there's no point in looking in that window it's dead Everything he says after this, like you, I think you could sit and debate if he's telling the truth or not. I think I want to believe he is telling the truth because it is an interesting sort of revelation that he's emitting here. Is that after Roswell in 1947, various countries got together and all agreed that if any extraterrestrial crafts were shot down in their country, they were responsible for killing whatever was living inside. Which obviously, right away, like that's not very nice. Like, what if they're coming in peace? That feels like a really, <laughs> that feels like a really shitty human thing to do, quite frankly. And I was actually quite happy that the the as he was telling this this story, he says that's actually why he's helping Mulder is that he's felt guilt and regret over because he's one of three men in the U.S. who have apparently killed one of these aliens. And it's haunted him since. And part of the reason why it's haunted him is because the thing that he killed didn't seem to show any fear when he did so. Uh, He describes the reaction of the being as the sort of ambivalence. Like, he he theorizes that, you know, the alien didn't know what a gun was or didn't understand the concept that it would be a threat or whatever. So it was just completely this innocent being looking at him and he killed it because that's what you're supposed to do. So if he is telling the truth here, and this is his motivation for secretly helping Mulder, and he is secretly wanting to build to truth and be good and ultimately do, do good for the world and make amends for what he's doing, I do actually think this is an interesting backstory. One, because he's just straight up admitting that aliens exist and he's killed one, which obviously is a big deal to Mulder, and then a Mulder looks in the window anyway and it's not there. It's already gone. Whatever they've done to whatever was there, it's already vacant. But it, it, it's cool because it it kind of like just it hints at this more intricate backstory to everything that was going on. And I think I really appreciated this because I, I said a few episodes in that I, I wasn't necessarily as into the conspiracy stuff quite as much. Just because it felt kind of, uh, I don't know, by the numbers, I guess. It felt like every time we get close to anything, ah, they just kind of... No, nope, there's nothing to see here. Everyone's covered it up and we don't get any real sort of headway or answers. I think what I liked about this is that it was a bit more of a solid piece of information, for one, but I liked it because it kind of hinted at a more thought-out mythology that's going on that on some level I feel like I kind of understand the secret world. I, mean, I, say secret, I just mean like the secret, the people in secret who know about all this stuff going on. Like, the way that they are dealing with these threats, or with these UFOs, are not even necessarily threats. I mean, obviously the one that came and took Mulder's sister sounds pretty threatening, uh, admittedly. Which does beg the question, like, how many different aliens have arrived on Earth in X-Files? Like, are they all from the same planet? I mean, probably not. Doesn't sound like it. Sounds like there's at least a few different species from different places that have maybe shown up on Earth. Do those different species know about each other? Are they in some kind of intergalactic community? Do they hate each other? Are they coming here, is one side coming here to try and help and befriend Earth and the other side's coming here to abduct people and do shady things? I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm just uh, throwing all this out here. But I think 
the other reason why I like this, other than just it's a cool bit of like mythology building to make it feel more like a real world that's happening beneath the surface, because before it was just sort of generic like conspiracy and generic kind of shadiness, is that this is the first time I think in the show where I'm supposed to feel sympathy for an alien. The, f the idea that Deep Throat feels regret over something he did to an alien, because I think up until now they've been very sort of dangerous beings, they've been very creepy or, or, or whatever, and I feel like this is a sign that it's a bit more... just... a bit more three-dimensional than that. That they can be innocent, they can, they can be s something that maybe Mulder will even eventually want to help, or understand, or, or whatever. It just felt like it fleshed out the whole idea of what the aliens are in this show for me and I don't know if this is kept up if this is contradicted again later on it might be it might not there's a lot of seasons of this show but at least for now I kind of like the larger themes that this kind of hits at beyond just aliens are scary and the government's hiding that they exist this is a bit more interesting to me it makes the the shady government side they already feel like villains, but now it's like, okay, now I can actually get on board with, like, not liking them and rooting against them as villains, because now it's like, oh, they harmed an innocent creature, potentially. And mul multiple, as well, potentially. Again, this is all based on if he's telling the truth here at the end. And it kind of feels like he is, because it feels like Mulder got so close that he has to give him this to back him down. But at the same time, like, I, I don't know. It's, it's tough to say at this point. I would like for this to hold true and not be something that he was just lying about. I think that would be disappointing because I do think it's actually quite interesting what he says here. So that's the, that's the main thing of the episode. That was what the the whole thing revolves around. There's a lot of little details. You see the truck driver leaving the secret base before Mulder and Scully go in. Uh, there's a woman that asks for Scully's pen when they're getting on the bus back to to Washington early on in the episode. And I don't know if that's meant to imply that's when she was like, the pen was switched with the one with the bug in it. Uh, but I would suspect it was, just because that makes sense. Well, otherwise, why would they go to the effort of having that little moment in there? But yeah, I, I think... Yeah, honestly, this is a very... It's a very back and forth episode because there's so many meetings with Deep Throat and every single time he meets with Deep Throat it sort of changes the direction of what the debate is between Mulder and Scully and there's so many details to what's happened with this thing starting in Iraq and then this truck in the US. There's so many details to everything. But despite all of the threads that are kind of at play it's actually a very focused episode because ultimately when I came in here to sit down and talk about it I wanted to talk about one thing. I wanted to talk about Deep Throat, his past, and his involvement in the debate that Mulder and Scully have about his involvement. All of the episode is about these things, pretty much. And I think on that level, it's very good. Um, I think as far as the lore of X-Files goes, I think this is easily the best episode that they've had so far. Best individual episode, I don't know if that is obvious, because you've got stuff like Squeeze, and there's been one or two other ones that have been, been really solid as standalone episodes. But as far as the mythology of X-Files goes, this has by far been the most I've enjoyed it, I think. Uh, certainly the most I've enjoyed any Deep Throat stuff. Like, he's been fine, like, I don't have anything against him, but it's, it's not necessarily been super captivating, I think, until this episode. So... Hey, that's a win. That's cool. So, um, let's see what's happening next time on The X-Files, shall we? Next episode is called Miracle Man, and here's a description on IMDb. The agents investigate a ministry led by a man whose son possesses the power to heal and to kill with the touch of a hand. So he can just kill by touching. Because I, I, I was about to get snarky and say, well, anyone has the power to kill. <laughs> that's not that <laughs> not that unique really but okay if it's just by like tap dead okay fair enough okay I, I see that what looks like in one of the photos here i don't usually look at the photos necessarily and try and figure things out but it seems like i'm getting like one of those evangelical kind of churches you've got the the preacher in the white suit with the microphone as i assume his son is the one who's healing someone and it's all you know people singing in choir and 
I'm seeing righteous gemstones. <laughs> is basically what I'm saying. So I will either enjoy this episode or absolutely hate it. It kind of just depends on how they handle these characters. <laughs> but I, I'm intrigued. We'll see. So that's Miracle Man next time. But let me know what you thought of this episode. And of course, you can support all the content over at patreon.com slash TV. It helps keep the review reviews coming. It helps me do more. I'm always thinking about uh, the ways I can add more reviews to the schedule. There's a bonus review on Patreon once a month for Columbo. Um, and I am thinking of adding another weekly show at some point to maybe take Sundays uh, going forward. So there's something every day of the week. If I get ahead on all the stuff that's already going, that is. But uh, yeah, if, if you like the sound of me also doing Millennium and or The Lone Gunman when it's a, a, appropriate in the, the release order, of the the show I don't, I don't think either ones for at least a couple seasons but uh by all means do uh do give your thoughts in the comments uh but anyway if you can't uh, support me on patreon that's cool uh you can also just hit the like button helps a lot people will find the show on the channel if they if you do uh but that is me so thank you once again for watching or listening i always appreciate it keep watching tv have you got any vanilla